Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. I call Kerry Tapu Allen. Uh, tēnā koe, Madam Speaker. Uh, Tuatahi a kahuri a hau uh, ki ngā uri, uh, mai ngā hapu o, o ngā tiparau, mai te maunga o hikurangi, uh, mai te awa o waiapu. Uh, anei te mihi, uh, mai oha ki a koto. Uh, Madam Chair, I too want to join in the. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I too want to join in the acknowledgements uh, to those that have travelled from uh, Ngāti Pūrau this afternoon to join us. Uh, Hiruini Parata uh, for his leadership and stewardship uh, through the course of this bill, but also uh, for the peoples of Ngāti Pūrau. Ani Pahuru Hiruai, uh, the Kaimahi o Ngā Kaimahi o Onepoto, uh, Te Rau Kupunga. Uh, a, a healthy servant for the peoples of uh, uh, Ruatoria uh, and the Sana Hikurangi and uh, Kali Rickard uh, 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 kanu te mihi. Um, Madam Chair, 14 years ago, I think I was outside this wee house protesting at the then government uh, for extinguishing the rights of whānau, hapu and iwi to access the courts uh, uh, to a little piece of land known as the seabed and the foreshore. Uh, 14 years ago, I want to acknowledge those um, from uh, Ngāti Pūrau under the then leadership of uh, Api Mahuika, but also that extensive kāhui around him, that uh, they, had, uh, they had people out on the forecourt, but they also, at that time, were in the rooms negotiating what is to become the most unique and only agreement of this type, uh, which we see 14 years later come into fruition. So it's right, uh, Madam Chair, to acknowledge the role that uh, Api Mohika played in his leadership, vision and aspiration for the people on Ngāti Pūrau to see this uh, piece of legislation come in, hopefully, very soon in the new year. Uh, to uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I want to acknowledge all of those kaimahi uh, that were out there meeting with the, the many members of those of, uh, of those mini hapu of uh, Ngāti Pūrau, and it's often, you know, uh, that, and there will be many, uh, but there are some that I got to intimately see uh, through Minga, uh, uh, through the trials and tribulations of um, working with the whānau from those various hapu, uh, and in particular the work of um, Mā Tānuku Mahuika, uh, Api's son, uh, Nathan Milner and Tira Johnson. I had the the privilege to work alongside them many years, but watch them go uh, through relatively formative stages of this piece of legislation when they're going through the consultation. So I just, I just wanted to, um, uh, to pay uh, a, a couple of moments homage to them for the work that they did in the background. Uh, Madam Chair, there were some um, remarks canvassed uh, by the Honourable Chris Finlayson earlier this afternoon, and I, I want to thank him uh, uh, for his contribution. And, I know many of us on this side of the, uh, well, actually, it sounds like across both sides of the House have had some, uh, have had many submissions from those uh, uh, concerned fisher peoples um, uh, that hold existing fishing rights up throughout the East Coast. Uh, uh, Mark Edwards, Gordon Halley uh, from Tate Rock Lobster Industry Association in particular, I know, have been uh, making persuasive um, um, submissions. Uh, to various members across this House. And I, I, I really want to, again, pay homage to the remarks and um, analysis provided in this House this afternoon from uh, the former Attorney-General uh, and Minister for uh, uh, Treaty Settlements, uh, the Honourable Chris Finlayson, who really addressed some of the key concerns that Clause 13 uh, 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 had caused for some of those that have existing fishing, uh, um, uh, fishing uh, uh, rights throughout the East Cape. Uh, so I'm not going to labour and go through blow by blow, uh, because as uh, I think it was the Right Honourable uh, David Carter uh, previously just said, uh, the Honourable Chris Finlayson has already been um, acknowledged apparently as, as the smartest man in this chamber and it will be a, a, a sad day when we see him leave, which unfortunately is, is pretty soon. So uh, he has articulately addressed, in my view, uh, those concerns that were raised by those folk uh, in the Teirawhiti Rock Lobster Industry Association with regards to the current fishing rights that they hold. And I hope that they take some... Um, 
some confidence by the analysis that he's given, particularly with regards to the nature and extent of the wahitapu uh, and, um, and the other matters that they uh, address this afternoon. Uh, Madam Chair, it's been canvassed extensively in this House this afternoon, and I, I don't need to labour the point, but 47 hapu um, of uh, uh, 57 is no mean feat. And I know there's been various analysis given across this House this afternoon as to whether or not that's, you know, that meets the threshold for or what should and shouldn't get over the line. But I just want to acknowledge that, um, you know, to have that degree of, well, actually, you know, for those that chose not to opt in at that time, well, now they can make applications under MACA and if they've got their submissions in, it's not actually the end of the road. Uh, they can go down that path. But they can opt in later on. And I just, I want to acknowledge that it was a monumental mammoth effort by those that have shown leadership within this settlement to get those hapu, all 47, well, 47 of them, over the line and agreement for, with regards to uh, this entire uh, settlement. So I just I don't want to undercut the significance of the work that has been done, but also to acknowledge that um, for some of those other hapu that chose not to step in, that there are multiple avenues for them to pursue their own arrangements. So, Madam Chair, I don't want to take up too much of this House's time. I do just, again, want to extend my... Um, my regards and my, uh, uh, my thanks, actually, to those that are the leaders of, uh, of uh, Ngāti Pūrō for the stewardship that you show for our communities up in the East Coast. Uh, anei he mihi tenakui. Ana I call Hareti Hipanga, Madam Chair.